folks, today on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel, we're gonna install a Mirafount frost-free waterer. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another gorgeous evening here on the Stony Ridge Farm. The weather has cooled off. It was almost 90 degrees today and it's finally cooled off a little bit. What we're gonna be installing today and what we're gonna be teaching today is how to install a Mirafount frost-free water tank. Now this could serve as a how to install any kind of frost-free water tank, but in my opinion, the Mirafount is the best tank for the job here. I'll scroll some specs down here as we're working uh, as to how many animals these tanks will work with. This is the 3390 model. It's the two ball model, and you'll understand that a little bit more here in just a second as we do the complete install of a Mirafount frost-free waterer here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. This is <laughs> really a two-person job lifting this thing up and putting it in place, but I'll show you guys how one person does it. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is get the mirror font waterer over here on our concrete pad, and then we're gonna walk you guys around it and show you exactly how everything works. A lot of hardware comes with these Mirafount waterers and down in the ground, I've already done a bit of plumbing work. So you guys know, it's inch and a quarter poly pipe ran throughout the entire farm. We have to take inch and a quarter poly pipe and reduce it down. We put a valve in, it's called a curb stop valve that drains the water back out of this pipe that's stubbed up right here. And this pipe has to be cut. So we go from inch and a quarter down to three quarter inch and that's the size of all the piping for the Mirafount waterer. This is a frost free waterer and I'm gonna show you how it works before we do the install. So I'm gonna do a quick disassembly of this unit right here. If you wanna fast forward, I'll put chapters in here for you guys to go forward and see how the total install, but you've gotta do all this if you're gonna install it. First thing we're gonna do is remove this lid right here. These are all stainless bolts. This is half inch, everything is set up on half inch, okay? except for the bolts that hold it to the ground, and we'll show you all those. So this is the lid. It is hollow. It's an insulated lid. We're gonna toss this to the side. This stuff is tough as nails, guys, so you really don't have to be too awful gentle with it. You can uh, sling it around a little bit if you need to. Um, down inside here is all the hardware. This comes with the mirror fount, and we'll pull out. There's a four inch PVC pipe. There's a bag with all sorts of awesome hardware. Again, this is the model. 3390. That's it. That's all your hardware. Uh, there are also uh, bolts to remove this. You can take this thing all the way apart, and if you need any parts for this, you can always order them from Mirror Fount or your local Mirror Fount dealer. This is the lid for one side, and it's sealed with a rubber gasket right here. We'll set that over to the side. Down inside here are these plastic balls. They weigh about eh, half a pound a piece. They float. And the way this works is um, in the wintertime, in the dead of winter, they serve as an insulating ball. In the hot part of the summer, we might have a bee's nest in here too, gotta be careful. In the hot part of the summer, they float up to the top and actually serve to help prevent mosquitoes from getting in. So what'll happen is a cow will come and they'll push this ball down. Now they're not instinctively gonna know to do that, okay? So we have to train the cows and I'll talk about how we have to train the cows. We're gonna set all this stuff to the side to lighten this unit up, okay? This is the center section right here. There you go. Now, this is insulation, which will go on this pipe that goes down into the hole where the valve is. And the valve, again, is called a curb stop valve. You can put pretty much any kind of valve with this, but the curb stop seems to be the best choice. The curb stop is an expensive valve. I'll post a link down in the video description. You can also buy the kit from Mirafount that has that valve already with you. Um, inside this bag, let's show you what's in the hardware bag real quick. Get my trusty. Milwaukee Razorback out of here. Cut this guy. Very nice packaging. Again, a four inch pipe there. We're gonna set some of this stuff to the side. For the ease of everything, we're just gonna rip right into here. Inside the bag, first and foremost, are your instructions. 
read them. Read these from top to bottom, guys. They're very interesting. And you can also order, like I said, the underground shut off kit, which is right here on the instructions. We basically built our own underground shut off kit. Okay. Um, in this bag, you've got a piece of rubber hose right here. It's three quarter inch rubber hose. I'm gonna set that in there. We have our valve and the float. This is the float. We have two plugs. These plugs are inserted from the inside, okay? We gotta put those plugs in so that it holds water. And also so you can drain it really, really easily and clean it, okay? It's all about cleanliness. We wanna make, make sure our cows uh, have plenty of good, clean water. This is a rubber gasket that goes on the bottom of the mirror fountain. We're gonna install that here in just a second. And hopefully this video won't be too awful long, but it's a very educational video, guys. This is the second one that I've installed and I learned pretty good how to put this thing together. And that's your valve and a little elbow. So there's a few little plumbing parts you'll have to put together. These are anchor bolts, okay? These anchor bolts go into the concrete pad which I'm sitting on. We have a few uh, um, hose clamps right here. We'll set those over to the side. These are the brackets. They're stainless steel brackets. That's what holds the mirror fount in place. And these are the training bolts, okay? And I'll show you how the training bolts work once we start getting water in this thing. It's really, really cool. So first we need to define what this is. The mirror fount goes on the concrete pad. They recommend at least 16 inches on either side of the mirror fount waterer. I made these pads six by six. You can do the same thing. Six by six seems to be the magic number for me. If I had to do anything different, I might make it uh, eight by six, just so I have just a little bit more room on either side. The cows are gonna come up and they're gonna step right up on here, guys, and they're gonna drink. So not a lot of weight goes into this. I did build six of these and do six of them all at the same time. That way I could just take my mirror fountains and I've got another mirror fount to put there. I've got three more out on the other side of the pasture that I'm gonna install. So this will be the only one that I show you how to do on camera. Down inside here, this is called a heat tube and you can see it's got a little bit of water in there, right there. Uh, you can see that valve is right down in there too. You can barely see it. This valve is just like the water shutoff valve in your house. So if you go out to the curb, if you have city water, it's called a curb stop. Curb stop means it stops the water at your curb and it has a bit of a drain, so it will drain the water out of the pipe. If we get really, really cold, we don't have to worry about our pipe freezing because there's no water moving through it. The heat tube right here actually brings heat from the ground and it's down about 20, 22 inches, something like that. Um, depending on where you live, you may need to stack two heat tubes. If your uh, frost line is like two feet, three feet, four feet deep, then you're gonna need more heat tubes, just so you know. Okay guys, go. if you're out in Minnesota or something like that, it's gonna be a little bit different than here in North Carolina our typical coldest temperature might be zero degrees Fahrenheit here. So the first step in this procedure is getting the mirror fount flipped up and over so we can put our rubber seal on. So wipe it clean. If you got a rag, it wouldn't hurt to wipe it clean with a good rag. We're gonna take this rubber gasket material that we just threw down and uh, take the tape off of it nice and gentle and install that on here. This basically just keeps contaminants and water, manure and mud, because what cows can destroy, they will destroy for sure. Get rid of that and we'll just place this seal right here on the top of the mirror fount water. Peel back our strip, just like so. Get it started anywhere you wanna get it started, it's just fine. Now, if you got a little bit left on the end, just take your uh, razor knife or pocket knife and cut that off. Give it a little firm press, ready to rock and roll. This is where I suggest having a helper, but if you don't have a helper like me, I don't have a helper. Lighten it up as best you can and set it over in here. Be careful, always practice good technique. Don't hurt your back. This isn't worth hurting your back over, so okay, we gotta be gentle because our rubber gasket, we don't want to damage our rubber gasket. We wanna set this in a way that we can access our valve down inside our tank. This is a curb stop shut off tool and it's about six feet long. So I'm six five. Yeah, it's about six feet long. Uh, this is the tool that you need or you can make your own. Pretty simple. Uh, this will fit the bolt type and it'll fit the type that we have, which has just a little wedge in there. Again, the curb stop valve uh, is an option. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. 
I recommend doing it because digging this up, no bueno, no fun. So I want to be able to reach down in with my curb stop valve um, tool, go all the way down in there and set this on the valve and turn the valve, okay? So that's what the goal is with this critter right here. We're gonna set it to the side because we don't need it just yet until we get it all plumbed in. Simple, simple, simple plumbing. I'll show you. I told you we need to put our plugs in. We'll just mash our plugs right in right there. I'm gonna make it where you can easily get them out. There's a plug on the right side and a plug on the left side. Okay, just press that guy in, press to fit. Now we're gonna be cutting this pipe. This is three quarter inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. We have to install this guy right here. Okay, so I just popped that off. It's threaded and you'll see why here in just a second. So we've gotta cut this off to meet a specific spec and I'll show you that spec. So this is the spec, okay? We're gonna slide this guy over and this is what will house our valve, okay? So our valve is gonna fit right in that hole right there. And this is our valve and the way it fits, I'll show you real quick. This goes inside right there and then our valve, whoops, don't drop it, gets screwed right into there. Now we're running a risk by setting that in there so we better get it out so it doesn't fall down in the hole and they end up having to fish it out. So we're gonna glue this down once we cut our pipe to the appropriate level here, okay guys? Pretty simple. So we're on the back of the pickup truck. Coming out of our Schedule 40 PVC will be this fitting right here. And we'll just go ahead and press this together. Again, this is gonna go on. Oh, <laughs> that's tight, man. Uh, it helps to maybe have a little soapy water if you want to. You can always put a little soapy water on these fittings. It's a barbed fitting. This will screw down into my PVC pipe. And then this is a flexible hose that will connect to the elbow that goes right up to where we're gonna be working. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna put our hose clamp in place on this critter right here. And then we'll go over and cut the PVC pipe. We'll show you exactly how all this is done. There's just a tiny bit of head scratching that has to be done. No measuring, you don't have to worry about measuring. You can eyeball this and really get it done. Pretty simple, guys. And this is a, I'm not sure exactly what size hose clamp it is. It all comes with it, so we'll tighten this guy up. This is a number eight. Snug it down. Be careful, you don't have to put it too gorilla tight, but you wanna make it snug, and you wanna double check these for leaks too. Nice and snug right there. Awesome. Now, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna cut our PVC pipe, and we're gonna glue in all of our fittings. The type of glue that I'm using right here is a PVC cement. It's called rain or shine okay and you can use this if it's wet outside if it's raining or something like that so if your pipe is wet you can still use this we'll prime it and we'll glue it all together so we've just got to line up this pvc pipe you don't have to worry about all this being too awfully complex it's not that big of a deal guys i'm actually going to put a zip tie on here this is the easiest way that i found to mark my pipe so i'll put a zip tie on yeah not really really tight but not really really loose Okay, and I'm gonna reach down in here. I'm gonna take my hose that I just made and I'm gonna slide it down there a little bit too. So I'm gonna push this down ever so slightly. And I know I need to go down about five inches from where I'm at. Okay, so we'll slip this pipe back out very simply and we'll slide down about five inches. I've got a reciprocating saw. You can just use a hacksaw, whatever you wanna use guys. Um, you can see here's where my zip tie is. So this is where we're gonna cut our pipe and we're gonna install our threaded connector. So this is glue on one side, threaded on the other three quarter inch. Very, very simple. <laughs> that cuts quick. Take your finger, clean up any burrs that might be on here. Just like so. We're getting close guys. We're getting very close to being done here. Take a little PVC primer. We're gonna prime this pipe right here. We're actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna prime the lower pipe too. This is our PVC fitting. We primed it also. We're gonna put our rain or shine in there. just like so. Don't judge me on my plumbing work here. Might be a little messy. This is farm plumbing right here. We'll put this guy on and we'll give him a little twist. There we go. Hold it just for a second and let that set up. Our valve is right down in there. We're gonna turn that on here in just a second, guys. You're gonna see all this in action. Let that set up for about two or three minutes. So while we're waiting on all that to set up, we're going to go ahead and put our Teflon tape in place on our valve, which is going to screw in. Now, these are probably, I don't think this is a tapered thread, but the other one is a tapered thread. You probably don't need to use Teflon tape, but I use Teflon tape on any kind of screw together type connection. So 
Give it about five good wraps is what I like to do. And then I'll take my fingernail, if I have any fingernails, and I'll bite in right here and I'll just twist this just like so, so that I get good penetration down into where this is gonna screw into my elbow. And that's gonna be the last thing we put together right there. Next one we're gonna do is gonna be this guy. Always put your Teflon tape on in the uh, direction that you're going to tighten. I uh, have boo-booed and done it the wrong way. And if you haven't boo-booed and done it the wrong way, then you've never done anything related to plumbing. We all make boo-boos. My boo-boo is I should have put this on before I put the uh, hose on. It would've been a whole lot easier to handle. <laughs> Guys, let me know. Tell me what you think I'm doing wrong. I love some good feedback. Everybody in the comment section loves some good feedback too. So if we can learn from each other, that's where it's at. That's what YouTube's all about. That's what the Stony Ridge Farm Channel's all about. So please jump in and subscribe. Click that subscribe button right there. No, right there. <laughs> We're gonna screw this guy to our three quarter inch PVC now that it's all set up right there. Just like so. If I was smart, I probably would have put all this together and then just slid that PVC fitting on there. But today, it's late in the day. I'm not very smart today. We're gonna take our channel locks, hold everything, and snug her down. Now, we're simply gonna slide our PVC pipe right back over, our four inch PVC pipe right back over here. We're gonna figure out where we need to cut our pipe again. Easy enough, again, we're gonna deploy zip tie. Your Stony Ridge zip tie moment here. Nice and loose, put this guy in position, slide our zip tie down to where we need to cut. Slip this guy back up again, and this fitting is just gonna slip right down into here. We'll use our pipe cutter right quick. There we go. Now we've got extra hose in case we make a boo-boo here, so save that, hold on to it. Pretty simple. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on this so it slides in a little bit easier. And don't forget to put your hose clamp on first. And we'll snug down our hose clamp. Guys, this is super, super simple, man. Super simple. Just need to make sure this is facing the right direction. We'll test fit everything. Whole lot of putting it together and taking it apart, huh? Now we'll go ahead and we'll glue our four inch PVC pipe. We'll go ahead and get our primer on here. Our rain or shine. Get her in there, get a good dollop in there. This is the final, the final countdown. You gotta get it in the right place, right position. Slide it in, same as before, give her a little twist as we install. Make sure our hole is pointed directly that way. And we are ready to rock. Next thing we're gonna do is simply instill our valve into position right here. Valve is good. Right there is where our float will go. Next thing we do, we just simply install our float. Fits right into position here, and we'll make some fine tune adjustments as we need to with the float valve. Drop our cover back into position here, just like so. Make sure we're all lined up. Very simple, we're gonna drop our valve on off tool down in there, find the valve, and turn the water on. Yeah, baby! This is filling up here. I want to make sure that's in the center. This is in the center, and that's just simply a float valve, almost like a toilet. Cool? Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to install our brackets on the bottom right here. Very simple. Slip this guy in, tap him with a hammer, loosen that up a little bit. Till we hit the bottom. Find it down finger tight. Snug as a bug. And we'll do this on all four corners. So we'll do it over here too, on these two sides. Now, it's time I talk a little bit of animal psychology for you. Do cows instinctively know to push a blue ball down? No, they don't instinctively know. You've got to train your cows to this. So what I've been doing is having one side all set up with the blue ball in place. And the other side, I'll either leave open like this with this blue ball held down by these longer bolts right here. So these longer bolts come with the kit. So simply, I just put this half inch training bolt into a threaded hole that's already in here. And what we'll do is we'll take our ball, and we're gonna push it down underneath that bolt. So we'll tighten this down just like so. And then we'll push the ball down 
under that bolt so it's out of the way and cows can get their head down in here and drink. Now, if you've got young calves, say you've got some young baby calves and you're really worried, you can leave this completely off until your new calves get trained to this water tank setup. So that's how it all works. Slap it together, we'll put our lid back on, just like so. Bolt everything back into position and we are frost free guys. The way this works again with the ball that's up in the air here, um, simply the cows just press their nose down. Again, the ball is very lightweight. They press their nose down on this and they get a drink of water and then it pops up. And that serves as an insulation ball and it also prevents mosquitoes from getting in there and laying eggs. Awesome guys. So that's how you install a mirror fount waterer. I did make one boo-boo. I did not put the pipe insulation on that goes through the down tube right here. So at some point, I'm gonna have to take this loose and slide that little bit of pipe insulation over there. I'll show you what this is. This kit comes with insulation that slides over that three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe. So I need to put that on. Guess I gotta save it. We missed a step. But that's how you do it guys. Six by six pad, mirror fount, cattle waterer. Again, that's the 3390 model. We have 40 cows. I think that will support up to, I don't know. I don't know exactly how many it will support and how much water it holds, but I'll scroll that right across the bottom of the screen. Hope you guys learned a little something. Pick yourself up a mirror fount. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. All right, woo, beautiful day. Beautiful sunset, nice. Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife. Bring your kids, we're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Woo! Oh, let's fall down. And get some glue on your finger. Mmm, finger glue. Now, it's time we talk animal psychology a little bit. Now it's time I get all my stuff together and then talk animal psychology. Please, stop biting my leg! <laughs>